This has got the Fix-It guy with a Bosch dishwasher that has the E09 error, and this is due to a bad heating element that's contained within the circulation motor heater housing. And this is a pretty easy thing to cure. All you have to do is put in a new uh, motor heater part. Here's the burned out section of it. And this is on a dishwasher that was only two years old, so it's probably uh, not used correctly and the heater burned out a little bit early. So if yours has an E09 error, most likely it's due to the heating element that's contained within the heater. And this is the part number for that unit. You can get these probably as little as $50, and I've seen them advertise up to about $150, so it just depends on where you go to find them. So we're going to pull out the lower spray arm, and we're going to remove the filter. Then we're going to use a turkey baster to remove any water that's left in the sump, because we want it to be a nice dry sump. It's normal for Bosch dishwashers to have about a cup of water left over inside. So once we get the water out, we're going to unplug it. We're going to disconnect the drain line, and then we're going to also disconnect the water inlet line. So we'll have to turn off the water first. And this is so we can remove the dishwasher from the cabinet. So to do that, we also want to remove these two screws at the bottom, get this plate out of the way. And then we're going to use a wrench to lower the legs by turning them to the right. So they're going to be going into the dishwasher. And that's going to lower the front of the dishwasher down. And then to get the back of it to go down, we use a standard head screwdriver we turn to the left this one little nut and that lets the back legs come down. So we're also removing the water inlet. And then once we get the dishwasher out of the cabinet, we can get to the circulation motor. We're using a standard head screwdriver to help kind of pry it out of the cabinet because this one's in there really tight. We got it wiggled loose. We're going to pull the dishwasher out from the cabinet and then on your right hand side we're going to pull up the insulation and that will expose the area where the circulation motor is. So we lift that out of the way and then in front of you will be the uh, machine controller. We're going to lift up on this plate get it out of the way, it just pops right up. We're going to remove the plug out of the back, that's where power comes into the controller. Just pull that out, then you can lift up on the controller, get it out of there. And there'll still be wires attached, but that's okay, you're just going to lift it up and pull it off to the side. That'll give you a nice direct line to the circulation motor. So first thing is we're going to use a standard head screwdriver to loosen up and pull out this black wire connector. And then there's one that's red in the back. You're going to grab that one and just pull it out straight towards you. That one comes loose. And there's also an orange one. And the orange one will probably take out a little bit later once we get the motor further out of the dishwasher. But the red one, you can just pull it out. So we're going to pry back on the um, spring cl uh, clip that's holding the circulation motor in place. And it's kind of a permanent one. It's not adjustable, so you just pry back with a standard head screwdriver. It'll release and then you can pull back on the rubber black mounting on the front so that now nothing is holding circulation motor in position and you should be able to wiggle it out. You have to kind of pull down first 
and then wiggle it down and then pull it towards you. We still have that orange wire connected. It's a little bit hard to get that one out. You can use a small standard head screwdriver to loosen that and then I'll pull it toward me. There we go. And there's our old circulation motor. So the motor was still working, but the heating element had just burned out. The customer said that they had never cleaned their filter, so maybe there wasn't enough water getting to the circulation motor, and the heater was building up so much heat that it just burned itself out. So now I'm putting the new hose clamp in position and I'm tightening it up a little bit so that it will fit right over the rubber hose there on the back and kind of stay up there by itself. I'm going to add a little liquid detergent to the outside part here and the inside part here so that this can more readily slip right into position like a lubricant. No, no, I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. Just making sure that that clamp is in position, ready to go. <clears throat> All right, we'll put the new pump in position. We're going to kind of push it up into that vertical hose first and then we'll push it away from us and that'll push it into the horizontal hose and then it'll basically be hooked up it'll be in in position you want to push pretty strong make sure it's seated in there and then we're going to tighten up that hose clamp we just use a small standard head screwdriver go righty tighty to tighten that up. I want to get it pretty tight. And then there's also that rubber holder that you want to slip over the gray plastic pin to hold it in position. You can see in the picture that the uh, black rubber piece is already in position. I'm just tightening up that hose clamp and then I need to put all the wires back in also. I'm just putting the orange wire back in. Just push it in until it clicks. Get the black wire back in. I'm gonna put the red one back in. Just push it in all the way till it clicks. And now we've supplied power to the motor and to the heater. There's the black one in the front. Just make sure they're all in there really tight. I'm going to pour a little water down in there just to take a look, make sure there's no leak. So the water should stay in the sump, and when you look at it from the other side, you shouldn't see any drips. If there are any drip, if there are some drips, it means you just need to get it in there a little bit tighter. This one did not drip, it was just in there correctly right off the bat. So put the motor, oh, we'll put the machine controller back in. Slips in, clicks into place. We'll go ahead and put the power plug back in. There we go. Put the black protective cover back over the wires on the, on the machine controller. We'll fold the insulation back down. We're going to put the machine back in the cabinet. So 
get it in there nice and flat, put the filter back in, put the lower spray arm, the lower basket goes back in. Get it nice and straight, and we're gonna do our connections. We'll put the hose, the drain hose back in position. Tighten up the fill hose. We'll turn the water pressure back on. We're going to go lefty Lucy on these feet to push the front of the dishwasher back up really strong inside the cabinet. Fits in there really good. And I'm just taking apart the old motor for fun, taking a look at it. You can see the, this is the motor in my right hand. My left hand is the heating element. Motor seems fine. The impeller wasn't obstructed. So it's just a matter of the heating coil just burning out, probably because it didn't have enough water uh, flowing through it, so it got too hot. But again, that was only at the two-year mark, which is really way too soon. Bosch has a much better reputation, so it was probably just was not being used correctly by the owner. So we're putting in screws to hold in the bottom panel, and that did the trick. This machine was back working great again. So I hope that's been helpful to you and you get rid of your E09 error and yours is working great. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.